Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the space panel at InfoShare. We are going to talk about space sector and we are going to talk about what's going on in space and how could you be in also involved with the space sector. So let's start. Uh, first of all, before we start, I would like to all of you to concentrate on one thing. Space sector, it's not only about space, it's not only about rockets, it's not only about astronauts and some movies in which there's lots of explosions. It's mostly about business. And we will be talking more about business here than uh, very, very high-tech uh, things that are flying far away from planet. We'll be talking about more about niches that are around here, which might be very, very obvious to you until the moment you realize that there is also a little bit of a space sector and space data inside of it. But first of all, it would be very, very nice for all of us to acknowledge one thing. There are lots of really, really remarkable achievements that have been uh, achieved recently. But most of them, what you see, they are related to space missions which are far away from planet Earth. This is a picture from Curiosity rover, which has been done as a very, very nice engineering project. Some of the technologies that were used on that rover are right now here active on Earth. Uh, but on the other hand, most of what you see about space sector, most of what you might be using, is related to Earth. It's related to telecommunications. It's related to satellite navigation. It's related to satellites observing Earth, which is called Earth observation. And uh, all of those activities, in fact, recently have become a very, very vibrant and completely different uh, than what you might be, what, what even a few years ago were, uh, was uh, very obvious in, in, the, in this niche. They are much more widespread. They are much more visible. They are, um, they are, the access to data is, com is completely different nowadays. Um, there's lots of opportunities that are around. There's lots of opportunities that might be uh, close, that might be far away. This is an example of opportunity of, of a market niche that uh, is still not that close that we might be thinking about uh, uh, to use it as a service to, to, uh, to, be par to be part of it. But there are also some other sectors which are much, much closer and uh, which you might be using already nowadays. Uh, those parts of the space sector, they are called downstream space sector. And today, we'll have a little bit more discussions about that part of the space sector. Um, so things related to maritime, things related to aviation, things related to localization or, or finding, the, uh, finding some assets or people in, uh, uh, over the world, things about tr data transfer. This is the space sector that is very, very common right now and is very, very vibrant. So. Before we start, it would be very, very good to know that um, we are here and we would like to share some of the information about the space sector. It is because the ICT sector and the space sector, they are very, very well interconnected. And the link between them is strong and grows, it becomes even, uh, it becomes even stronger. So the next two presentations will give an overview about two interesting aspects of the space sector. One of them, is related to satellite navigation and opportunities related to use of uh, satellite navigation down on Earth. And the second one is about Poland. We have a representative from the Polish Space Agency, just in a second I will give more details, who will talk about the Polish Space Agency and its impact on Poland. Uh, however, before we go, uh, I would like to talk with you about three and then four potential steps in which uh, you might participate to uh, projects related to space sector. You might even create them. So uh, there are very, three very, very important activities right now going on in Poland to which I strongly recommend and I strongly invite you to participate in. One of them is related to competition called Gailo Masters. The second one is related to project position. In fact, at this right moment, oops, excuse me, at this right moment, uh, among one of the startups related to, uh, to space sector is pitching here uh, among the other, uh, among the other uh, startups at the startup zone. So fingers crossed, let's see that uh, if one of those, if that company is not going to be the winner this year. Um, and finally, this year, the, the first in this region of Europe, uh, Space Technology Accelerator will run. And of course, we are looking for nice ideas and nice projects that might be related to space sector. So that's the contact to me. And let's uh, invite our two distinguished speakers, starting from Ms. Justyna Rodelkiewicz, who comes, uh, applause if I can ask. Who comes, from the, uh, who comes from the uh, European uh, 
Satellite Navigation Agency. She will give a presentation about the uh, satellite navigation and opportunity satellite navigation. And then, just, just in case, Professor Marek Moszyński, who is the representative from the Polish Space Agency. Uh, so we'll give the, now the floor to Justyna and give the presentation to her. Thank you, Krzysztof. So as uh, already introduced by Krzysztof, space is not only about space. So it's up to us to launch the satellites, to take care about the orbits. And we need you to use the signals that will be produced by satellites here on Earth. And you cannot imagine how much ICT and space have in common. So let's speak first about GNSS. Everyone has heard about GPS. I'm sure that many of you have used one of the navigation applications that you have on your phones to come here. But we don't have only GPS now. For some years, we have the Russian system GLONASS, and now we are building also a European system that is called Galileo. Maybe some of you have heard about Galileo, have heard about delays, that uh, it will never work. It's not true. Starting from this October, Galileo will be available in your smartphones. And uh, I would like to encourage you to use it and build better navigation experience. So as uh, Krzysztof uh, introduced, uh, I'm working for the GSA. GSA is a European agency in charge of Galileo. So let's look at the GNSS market. So now we know GNSS is the global navigation system. The GNSS market is forecasted to grow by double digit in the next decade. We have today 4 billion GNSS devices. Now, what does it mean? What is a GNSS device? It's a smartphone. It's a wearable fitness band. It's a laptop. And so every one of you has three space receivers in your pocket, which is a very promising market. And uh, now not all the mobile phones in the world are GNSS equipped. But in the next one, two years, all of them will have um, a receiver of space signal. So what to do with this information? Let's see what the others are doing. More than 50% of all the applications in Apple Store and in Android use in some way location information. Because it's, not, it's interesting to know that all of the things in the world will be connected. But without knowing where they are, what you can do. So I will speak today about the global ICT trends, the trends that you maybe know well, and how you can use positioning satellite information in them. I split them into two areas, the so-called consumer applications, and the second area, smart mobility. So let's take a look about, a bit about, uh, at big data. So today, we have already the capacity to process billions of terabytes of data. And what we can do with this? We can know trends. I don't know if uh, you are following here in Poland um, the series of House of Cards. In House of Cards, the president, the candidate for presidents, was using one of the search engines to understand the trends of consumers and to win the elections. And this is not that far from reality. But what is important is to also know the location and to create business with this. So I have an example here. Uh, a red Roof is a hotel chain. They have decided to run a special marketing campaign, location-based marketing campaign, to uh, increase their businesses. And so they analyzed in which uh, days there is some weather problem that will cause flight cancellation. They have analyzed what kind of um, um, travelers are affected by that and what they can do about it. And they have run a targeted advertising campaign to target people which flights have been canceled and to offer them discounts for hotels that are within one kilometer region from their location. And they have achieved a 10% business increase. Internet of Things. Everybody's talking about this. Internet of Things relies on sensors. And one of the sensors that will be used is the location sensor. And one of the location technologies is GNSS. Another example for you, a connected suitcase. This is an application that was launched by KLM together with Air France. You will be able to track your suitcase by GNSS up to the level when it enters the airport, because as you well know, GPS is not working inside. 
and then using some indoor location sensors to locate with more precision. This service will be launched at the end of this year. Another trend, augmented reality. So you overlay additional information on the real world that you can see. An example is Wikitude. It's like Wikipedia, but when you can put your camera screen on the mountain, it will tell you what is the height, uh, what is the name, how you can reach it, and maybe propose you some routes to climb on it. Another example here, it's an application that I know it's also existing in Warsaw. It's when you walk in the street and you want to rent an apartment, you put your camera view on, on a block, and it will tell you which apartments are there to rent, how they look inside, what is the price, and what is the availability. Very useful. What is also supporting all the use of location is the fact of using the so-called geofencing. So it's not uh, always necessary to know the absolute position. It's not necessary to know that you are in these particular coordinates, but you are inside a specific zone. And so there are a lot of applications that are being built around this. So maybe it's enough to know that you are in a concert zone to charge you automatically for, for a ticket. Or it's enough to know that you are in this parking zone to charge you automatically for parking. In this respect, um, an important um, feature of the positioning systems is the so-called authentication. So if you want to be charged by a service based on your location, you have to ensure that there will be no hacking, cheating, and that you will be charged exactly what needs to be charged. I will come back to that later. And all these trends on positioning side lead to so-called ubiquitous positioning. It means that soon we will be located everywhere, indoor, outdoor. And there is a lot of research now on the GNSS side to ensure that you will be led up to the doorstep, that there will be no break, no lose of fix, and uh, the, um, uh, the switch to indoor location means will be seamless. Now a few words about the other part, the smart mobility. I'm sure you have heard about connected cars. We have seen a study recently published by McKinsey that is saying that already 13% of all the buyers of new cars is considering connectivity as an important feature, as important as the size of the engine. And uh, there will be millions, millions of cars with connectivity sold already this year. And what is the GNSS role? Here you see what are the capabilities of the connected cars. And all the ones in red rely on GNSS technology. And what is the ultimate step? Is the automated driving. So today already we have some first functionalities in new cars that will take over the wheel from time to time, but the ultimate step is to have a fully autonomous car. And it's not happening only on the road. So here on the left side, you see some of the research projects, partially also co-funded by our agency, that are working on autonomous driving. However, this trend is uh, spreading in all the different segments of transport. So we are working on autonomous vessels, autonomous robots for farming, and in the end, on UAVs as well. Today, there was an interesting presentation in the morning uh, on IoT networks, and there was an example of connected bee house. And yes, this is where all of this is leading, so full connectivity. And the last example is on the um, tracking of containers. So as you know, there is a lot of increase now on transport, multimodal transport, which is uh, requiring a so-called containerization of transport. And this company has invented an application that is tracing these containers all over the world 24 hours per day. Uh, this uh, is using GNSS technology to locate a ship. There is one antenna at the, end, at the back of the ship and then using some relative positioning means to locate the container within the ship. So this um, company has won an innovation award last year for this idea. And what is the place for Galileo? So as I mentioned to you, there is not one GNSS anymore. 
And um, in your everyday life, you may think that GPS is good enough, that it leads you to the right location, it's working well in your car. However, as you look at the trends of the future, it will not be enough soon. And that's why the European Union is working on the Galileo program to increase the accuracy and to increase the performance and to um, provide a safer transport and better navigation experience. And as I mentioned before, Galileo will be operational from October. So please watch the news for the first Galileo phone and help us to create innovative applications in Europe. In order to support that even more, uh, there is a funding scheme that will be launched in November. And uh, if you have any questions, you can catch me then later and I can provide more information on the funding. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like now to introduce Professor Marek Moszyński from the Polish Space Agency. And is his presentation ready? Yes, we see that it's ready. So, Professor Moszyński, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank you, the organizer, for inviting Polish Space Agency representative for the event, and especially as the event was born at the Technical University of Gdańsk, at the Faculty of Electronics, Telecommunication and Informatics, I want to mention that uh, you see that in previous presentation that there is a full of uh, ideas and uh, technology aspects that are present in uh, the space subject are teach, are taught at the faculty. So, uh, thanks to organizer, thanks to organizer, I want to say a few words about Polish Space Agency as a representative of governmental organization. So you will see that there is a different point of view of uh, what happened and what is going to happen at the Polish market. Next, please. So Polish Space Agency was established in 2014. It's a simply new baby on the market, as you see, and it is supervised by Prime Minister. The headquarters are in Gdańsk, as you probably know, and the president is Professor Marek Banaszkiewicz, who was, uh, for many years, he was a uh, director of uh, Polish Space Center uh, of Research. Mm. As you may notice, the budget of the Polish Space Agency is very low. It's a 2.5 million euro. And if you compare with the space budget of our neighbor, Germany, it's a thousand less. If you compare with the European Space Agency, it's 2,000 less. If you compare with the National and uh, NASA American Space Agency, it's a uh, 5,000 less money. So you see that this is not only new baby, but it's a preliminary entity at Polish market that could uh, do a little for now, but hopefully a little more later on. Next, please. So uh, organization chart looks uh, like this. Uh, there are six departments divided in uh, two directories, civil and defense. And you see, for example, in this defense uh, that uh, there are Department of Military Satellite Technology and the Department of Defense Project, and these are organized in a technology rather context than military, how to uh, take something from the space for military. And the civil directorate is divided in Department of Research and Innovation that is uh, just organizing, and the Department of Education which is very important for our country because the knowledge about the space is it's in the beginning. However, the most important part is the Department of Strategy and the uh, Department of National Space Program, as it is a very important moment for us to define the strategy and to define the National Space Program. So uh, we see that uh, agency would be probably responsible for national space program and it will be done with a, a cooperation with the Ministry of Economic Development, Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Science and Higher Education and I would add probably uh, with the Ministry of uh, Digitalization in which uh, the Galileo um, program is also 
present. Actually, uh, if we say about national space program, we need to think about from where we need to offer money for business, for science, for education. And actually, the budget may come from our institution, which are um, from Ministry of Science and Higher Education, I mean the National Center of Research and Development and National Science Center. And there are more institutions in Poland than can offer um, money for space uh, science, for space activity. Next, please. So there are five areas of activity, industry, science, security and defense, society and education. And I will say a, a few words about each of the area uh, to let you know what is, on, or what is actually going on. Next, please. So uh, for the industry, we need uh, supporting and strengthening the competitiveness of Polish space industry. It is very important to harmonize our efforts, because so far we observe that the efforts of our industry is, um, is going in a different direction. So there must be a, simply a program how to deal with the money, how to uh, use the money effectively, and not to perform uh, scientific research with, uh, which are not in line with our governmental interest. Next, please. So far, through half a year, we managed to support the space sector by so-called consulting services. Everybody knows there are many opportunities for the business uh, to uh, find the money. There are usually in the European uh, context, uh, in a, a European space agency programs, in the Horizon 2020, what was mentioned. So. Uh, we need to know how to uh, prepare the project proposal because it is very important uh, as others observe that we have no enough knowledge how to properly prepare such project. For that case, uh, the European Space Agency prepared a special program, Polish uh, Incentive Scheme for Space Activity, and uh, there are two, uh, two um, programs already done, and we see there is an activity in, in this context in Poland, and there is an interest simply how to obtain the money, but we need to know how to do it. So for science, it is also important how to cooperate with the um, international institution, how to find international partners, because if the science from Poland have an idea. There is no simply chance to uh, proceed with a proposal just internal in Poland. We need to have partners outside. And in the space sector, it is very important because they can obtain money only if uh, in an international context, every proposed aspect or task performed during the program would be of interest in uh, other countries. Uh, and now, Polish uh, POLSA for security and defense. Obviously, the aim is increasing Polish defense and security capacity. And uh, actually, uh, support our decision makers uh, with a special uh, policy what to do to have uh, security. So I wouldn't say much uh, on this slide, but on the next, you will see that uh, this uh, directory of Polish Space Agency uh, prepares some uh, pre-feasibility study po for Polish space awareness system, for radar intelligent imaging satellite system, for, um, next please also, for scientific research satellite for ultraviolet astronomy, next please, and for and these are um, uh, activities which uh, should uh, found a solution on Polish market, how to prepare future mission, how to uh, evaluate our potential uh, for launching satellites. And another aspect which is very important is a society. 
So we know that from the society point of view, uh, we should uh, create a market how to use the data which uh, creates a very big data amount. Uh, and it comes with the aspect of ICT because uh, we need to transfer the data into information, what was mentioned before, uh, and we need to simply build a national space community to be ready for this. Uh, and next, please. And uh, for that, we create a pilot project. Uh, we defined uh, uh, areas, crisis management, green energy, environment, and it would be in a further study uh, what areas should be important for, Pola, for Poland. Uh, from ESA point of view, there are six areas in which probably one is not valid for Poland, polar scientific research. So the last five, like uh, crisis management, land monitoring, and so on, are very valid. And finally, next please, very important is education. We are in the simply beginning of that. Uh, there is a small interest in uh, learning uh, space knowledge in the context of system engineering. There are particular interest in uh, ICT technology as we know. However, this is very important in our uh, approach of using the data for the future uh, prospect. And finally, there are aspects of uh, defining first the declaration of co cooperation between university. Next, please. There are new degrees, courses, which will be offered on some of the university. Next, please. And finally, I would say that uh, so far there are 40 employers at the po Polish Space Agency. The target is 50 for the budget that we have. And we probably will try to have more money for our future task, which, when you compare with the other agency, are challenging. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.